Hi, my name is Bill Surrett. I'm a data scientist with DataRobot. And today I'm gonna to be discussing train validation and holdout and why it's necessary for evaluating your machine learning models. So let's imagine that you work for a lender and you're building a credit risk model. You want a model that's gonna determine for each loan applicant, the probability that they actually are gonna repay their loan. So you go back to your historic data, you build a model, and you find that the model fits fairly well. You bring those results to your VP, and the VP asks you, you know, that's great that it fits your historic data, but I'm really interested that this model is gonna fit new data well. Is this model gonna be able to predict on a new loan applicant that we get tomorrow? Let's look at what happens when we try to fit a model to data. So let's say that you wanna fit a fairly simple linear model. You take your data, you fit it into an algorithm, and what that algorithm is gonna do behind the scenes, it's gonna search through a candidate set of all possible linear models. And it's gonna return one that fits that data well. So the question becomes, how is that model gonna do on data that it's never seen before? What we're gonna do is we're gonna randomly split our data into two pieces. We fit our models using the training data. Now to see how that model actually performs, we're gonna make predictions over there on the validation partition. And then we're gonna see how good are those predictions? How well do they actually line up with the actual outcomes? Now this setup works really well if all you're doing is building one model. But what if you're building several models? So let's say now we wanna build a linear model, a support vector machine, and a tree-based model. We take our training data, we put it into an algorithm to fit a linear model. That algorithm is gonna search through a list of candidate linear models in a very sophisticated way, and it's gonna return one, the one that fits the data the best. We're gonna take the training data and put it into an algorithm here, and it's going to search through a bunch of candidate support vector machine models, again, in a very sophisticated way, and it's gonna find one that fits that data the best. Tree-based algorithm, same thing. We're gonna take our training data, put it into an algorithm that's gonna search in a very sophisticated way through a bunch of different possible tree-based models, and it's gonna return the one that fits the training data the best. What that means now is, again, the training data has been used for model selection. We cannot use that data to evaluate model performance. So we take each one of these models, we make predictions on our validation partition, and we assess how well each of these models predicts on that unseen data. But now we have three different models, we only need one model. So we need to choose one. The natural thing to do here is to choose the model that fits the validation data the best. You have your candidate models, and you're gonna put them into an algorithm, that's your thought process, and you're gonna see how well they fit the validation data, and you're gonna choose one. And what that means is, for the same reason as before, we cannot use this validation data to evaluate the goodness of fit of that model. So the solution to this is pretty simple. What we do is we take our entire data set and we break it up into three pieces. The training partition here in gray, the validation partition in green, and the holdout partition in red. We fit our linear model on training, we make predictions on validation. We fit our support vector machine on training, we make predictions on validation. We fit our tree-based model on training, we make predictions on validation. For those three models, we see which one fits the validation data the best. We choose that model, but now we can't use any of this data because it's all been used in model selection. So what we do is we take that final chosen model, we go to our holdout set, we use it to make predictions, and we evaluate how well that model predicts on the holdout set. So that's an overview of the train validation holdout partitioning and why it's necessary to evaluate your machine learning models.